Hello again, everyone. So I've had some requests for a fountain pen collection video and just a warning, this is going to be a very long video because I have a lot of fountain pens. The ones that I'm showing on the screen right now are just fountain pens that I have associated with different notebooks or I happen to be writing with at the moment. So they are uh, out of cases and out of their traveler's notebooks that they're normally associated with. I figured it would be quicker just to go through these first and not necessarily take them out of the notebooks that they're associated with on camera. So as you, as you may have gathered, this is a fountain pen collection video. So this is just the beginning. I have several cases and a few more loose pens. Um, and another disclaimer, there may be some pens missing. Um, I may have some other cheapy pens. Uh, there's some shark pens and there may be some sketch pens that are in a variety of different setups somewhere that I, that I haven't kept track of. <laughs> so I didn't take them out today, but this is the bulk of it and represents essentially the pens that uh, I like using on a, on a daily basis or, you know, as much as I can anyway. I can't use all of them on a daily basis. That would be crazy. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna start with this one. This is a Pilot Vanishing Point, and this has a medium nib. I am going to start uh, showing the nibs on each pen. We'll see how long that takes. I, I'm not gonna go into too much detail. If you do want detail on individual pens, please let me know, and if I already have a video, I'll refer you to that, and if not, I will put one on my list. So this is the Pilot Vanishing Point in blue. I really, really love it. This is associated with my five-year Leuchstrom journal, and I keep it there with it all the time. I usually just put an ink cartridge in it. I am not using um, fountain pen ink with that. I'm just using a blue-black cartridge. So this is my Diamond Twisby 580 ALR in Prussian blue. And this is associated right now with my Everyday Carry. It is in a fine nib. And I really love this pen as well. It uh, is filled with Aldous Huxley by Organic Studios. And I feel like that is an absolute perfect match. And for right now, I'm not really looking to switch my Everyday Carry pen. This one is a Sailor Prophet, uh, like a 1911, but for the Japanese market. And the title of this one was In the Promenade. And some of these I may forget the name, so I apologize if that's the case. And this has a medium fine nib, which I have smoothed a little bit. And this is generally associated with my uh, YouTube journal. And I have it there pretty much all the time because the color matches the notebook. This is a, another Twisby. This is an Eco in the color pink. It has lavender platinum black in it, which it's had since I got it, and it works really well. This, I believe, is a medium nib, and I have this one associated with my reading journal all the time. The nice thing about this pen is no matter how, how long it is in between times picking it up, it always writes right away. That's kind of why I like Twisby pens because they generally do that. Actually, the majority of these pens that I have in sort of my everyday writing world, they do write right away. So that's why I like them. This one is a rather newer acquisition. This is a Peniter um, Avatar UR in amber and it has a medium nib. And this particular pen I currently have associated with sort of just my random daily journal, which I haven't been writing in much. So uh, my, my daily journaling often suffers, but I have it associated with that so that I can write with it because I love this nib. And then this is another Twisby Eco in the clear. And I actually cannot remember what I have in here. It might be Diamine Oxblood. That's probably it. And I have this one associated with my home journal, which I ha actually have not shown on the channel yet. So that is on my list to do at some point. Basically in my home journal, I keep track of like inventory in particular rooms that I wanna make sure I keep for insurance purposes and that sort of thing. And then I also keep notes as to things I might like to do around the house. But this one is a great pen for that as well because it doesn't dry out. And I think this is a medium as well. And I'm trying to keep this expedient, so I'm not going to um, spend too much time on each pen. 
So this is a Platinum Kurdos in red. I currently have this associated with my, oh, with a medium nib. And I currently have this associated with my journal where I keep track of art classes that I have taken. And I haven't shown that on the channel either. Again, that's on the list <laughs> of videos to do. This I think is currently inked with Robert Oster Fire and Ice, which I quite like. This pen doesn't always start right up. Sometimes I have to dip it in water. But again, I do live in a really dry environment, so it is what it is. <laughs> uh, so this is a Sailor Pro Gear Mini in the blush color, and it has a medium fine nib, which I have smoothed a little bit. And uh, this one is generally associated with my um, gratitude journal. So I have that with that. And that's why these are out. And these I were just I was just writing with generally. So this one is one of my all-time favorites. This is my Pelican M800 in the brown black, and it has a bold nib. And this broad or bold nib is great for writing, everyday writing. It's not too broad. Uh, and I believe I have this filled with linen toolbar Wenshang Puchong tea. Um, and I just love this combination. It's something that I, I will be hard pressed to, uh, choose a different combination for this pen because it's been working so well. So I'll put that off to the side. I think I have that in my pen well here on my desk. And then just a couple of things I had in my little pen holder here on my desk. This is a Retro 51 Lincoln to look like a copper penny. And uh, this has a medium nib. And I've been writing with this lately because I just got it and, uh, or fairly recently got it and I'm quite liking it. It has Pelican's uh, ink in a uh, brilliant brown, I believe is the color. And then this one I literally just inked. I got this one used. It is a uh, Karis Customs Copper Mini. And uh, I believe it has a fine nib on it or it could be a medium. I'm not quite sure. It's not labeled on the nib, at least not that I can see. And I just inked this up with Sailor, Sailor Manyo Ume. And I only just tried it out, but I want to write with it more, which is why I have it on my desk. It's, it's a little bit of an awkward size because it is a pocket pen and it doesn't post, but, uh, but it actually writes quite well and the weight is quite nice. Okay, so that's what I had on my desk and associated with journals. Now comes sketching pens. So I probably could do a whole other video on these. And um, these, there are some sketch pens that are associated with watercolor setups that I can't really find right now. Uh, there's a few Pilot Kakunos that are in other setups that I couldn't find, so I don't have those. I think I have three or four of these all associated with watercolor setups with waterproof ink in them. And I have a variety of sizes. Uh, I, I think the other ones I have are all the clear ones so that I can see what my ink level is. But these are great. There, This is a um, uh, oh, Kaweco pen clip that I put on here, which fits quite nicely. And I did that for all of them. This is just the cheaper pen clip, so I put it on there. And I cannot remember which ink this is inked with, but this is a medium size nib. And then I have some finer nibs that are associated with other uh, watercolor setups. This is a platinum desk pen, which uh, I think this particular model is no longer made, but they still have a desk pen that is like this. This has an extra fine nib. I have it loaded with platinum black. Uh, it has a special feed that accommodates the larger particles of platinum bat black, and it is great for writing. You can get some line variation with the nib. It's just generally great for watercoloring, especially with that ink. This is another platinum desk pen of a newer model in red. I got this from Amazon. And this is also an extra fine, I believe. And I think I have one of the Diatramentus permanent inks in here, but I can't remember which one. Uh, it might be Urban Gray or uh, one of the grays. I don't remember. Anyway, it's neither here nor there because I'm not testing them for you. But uh, this is also a great one. Uh, these are a little bit longer, so they are in... Um, a separate case. Uh, where did I, oh yes, yeah, so I do have them in this style choice case along with these two because these are somewhat longer. So I'll put that in there before we move on. So this is a Sailor Fude nibbed pen. This just has water soluble ink in it, but it has a Fude nib. 
so you can write with different line weights depending on the angle of your pen. And this is the pink one, which is actually not my preferred one because uh, it has a little bit low of an angle for my natural angle. Um, oh, and then I have another one. This is this the green one is the one I use the most. Um, and they, they both have the same nib. They just are uh, the, the nib of the angle. The angle of the nib is slightly different. And then I'll put these in here as well because that's where these live. And uh, then I have this one, which is a Lamy Joy. I used to have a gold nib on here, but I actually put a steel extra fine on here. And this has platinum carbon black as well. And this is another watercolor friend of mine. Um, and so that's what I use that for. And then this Pilot Kakuno, I actually have in a little watercolor setup here where I just have it tucked in this uh, Superior Labor case with a watercolor palette and some brushes, some travel brushes. And this is actually quite a nice little setup. Okay, I'm gonna put those off to the side now. And you may notice that this is a shark, but it also is also a pen case. And this is where I keep the rest of my sketch pens. So I'll get those out. So I'm gonna probably stop talking about which ink is in here just because I don't always know. These all have permanent inks in them. And this is a uh, Pilot Elite pocket pen in a font flexible fine or a soft fine. You can get a little bit of flex off this. It's not, I wouldn't say flex, it's soft. Uh, and this is great for sketching. So that's one of my sketching pens. This is a Pilot Falcon that I'm also using for sketching, and this is a soft fine. Actually, I think on that, I don't think this is a soft fine, I think it's just a fine, but it is softer than an average nib. And this one actually has what is labeled as a soft fine. This is the Pilot Falcon, and I'm using this one for drawing as well. All of these are that you're looking at now. So this is a Twisby Go, which I have a waterproof ink in here. And then I have a 1.1 uh, stub nib. And I've actually used this for drawing on the channel before. It's quite nice for that purpose. Then I have my most expensive uh, sketch pen, which is a Sailor Profit 1911 uh, with a 21 karat nib in extra fine and it is super extra fine but it's really great for line hatching and uh drawing with a fine line it's actually one of my favorite sketch pens and then i can never remember the name of this pen it has it has a number in its name it's a platinum pen that is no longer available it's been discontinued but i love 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 it uh, i actually have two in this fine nib it is a 14 karat gold nib and I have platinum carbon black in both of them. The nib is very flexible and nice and it's it's pretty much my main sketch pen. I have two of these and it's the one I like to use the most. And then, uh, oh, and I should also say that I'm not gonna be putting links to all these on the bottom uh, underneath the video just because it's so many. Um, like I said, if you want to know more about a particular one, just ask in the comments and I will do what I can to either get you a video or uh, put one on the list. So this one is a golden rich, golden, I'm sorry, golden writ sketch writer. And this I actually got from Jerry's Artorama. It's specifically for sketching. It has a titanium nib, which I believe is either fine or extra fine. I can't remember, but it does seem a lot broader than uh, I thought it was going to be, probably because titanium nibs have a little bit of flex. Um, so, and it's a little awkward when I post it to screw it on the back, it's a little uh, back heavy, but it actually works pretty well as a sketch pen. So that's what I have been using it for. So that's all the pens that are my art fountain pens. So I'm gonna put that off to the side now, I have done a recent video on this one. This one's still in its box. This is the Ranga Model 5. This has a cursive italic broad nib on it, um, all from Peyton Street Pens. And um, it's a great pen. It's gigantic, but I like it. <laughs> so I haven't gotten a case for that yet, which is why it's still on my desk inside the Peyton Street Pens box. So I think that's all the one-offs. The rest are all in cases, which I will show you now. 
So this is a case by um, Hand Stitch Leather Tea. It was a custom order, but I actually purchased it off of a um, secondhand sale site. Uh, the, the person I bought it from had it special ordered, so you can't really get these. I have three vintage pens in here. This is an Aurora vintage pen. It has a medium nib, and it is actually one of my all-time vin favorite vintage pens that I have. It writes fantastically. I love it, love it, love it. And I don't know what the model is. And then this is a... Um, it's a Parker, uh, so I've, I've forgotten the model. <laughs> so it's a Parker. This was a troublesome pen. I got it from a seller who turned out to be quite difficult. The cap originally did not fit, uh, so I got a replacement cap on eBay that now it, it caps, it clicks, it closes, it stays closed but it does not have the model name on the cap, which the other one did, and I have the cap somewhere else, so I've, <laughs> I've forgotten what it is. It's probably a knockoff cap, but um, but it matches the pen, and it stays on. I've saved the caps in, in case I ever want to restore it. Um, yeah, the cap itself was like 30 bucks, which was kind of expensive to replace a cap. Anyway, so this is another Parker. It is a Parker dual fold. I believe it's the junior. It's It's got some nib gunk from the ink on it. I forget what I have in here. It's it's a red ink and it should be fairly, I mean, it's, it's fairly normal ink, but it does seem to be crusting up on the nib a little bit. I, it's been a little while since I've used this one. I think it's one of the Diamine Blue series inks that I have in here, maybe Poinsettia. Um, and this, uh, I don't know what, I think it's like a medium nib, but it writes very broadly. I purchased this one for, restored from Peyton Street Pens, and I quite like it, but it's not necessarily my favorite pen. But I do keep the these three vintage pens in here. So uh, you will see some additional vintage pens in some of my larger cases, but I have I am not including some of the vintage pens that don't work, and I'm waiting to get restored. This collection also does not include my uh, Pilot uh, calligraphy nibs, which I have a whole a full set of, and I didn't think you needed to see those because they're not very interesting. So this is basically like my little expensive case where I have three very expensive fountain pens in this Tachia case. Uh, I have this Aurora Luce Blue with a uh, fine gotcha nib on it, which uh, actually writes quite well just for everyday writing. I have Con Pecky in here by Pilot and uh, it's just a lovely writer. At some point I would like to get uh, sort of like a medium size, just a regular medium size nib in a gold nib from Aurora, but they are very expensive pens and I got that one on a super deal from Endless Pens. so. That's why it's where it is. So this is a Pilot Custom 823, which is one of my all-time favorite pens. It has a medium nib. It is a piston filler. It's lovely. I love it. Uh, I did not love the original ink that I had in here. I have since put Kobe number 57, which I think is called Hydrangea. And that's been working well. It's really beautiful. I managed to get a really great fill the last time I filled it. Um, and it's just a nice combo. I like it. And then here is my Sailor 1911 Large, which is my preferred size, but I only have one of them because I have not <laughs> purchased more of them due to the price. Uh, and this has a medium nib. I purchased this one for a great deal on Amazon. Um, and the nib is beautiful. I, I love it. I love everything about this pen. This has Sailor Yamadori ink in it, I believe. I love it. But anyway, these are these are some of my favorite pens in my little expensive pen case, what I call it. So I'm going to put that off to the side. So I have another round of pen cases here. And then after these, I have two larger pen cases. So I'm going to have to go through a little bit quicker now. Uh, let's go ahead and go through this. I'm actually not going to do a full run through of these because I did that fairly recently. So I'm going to put a video down below to my Pelican collection. Um, you you just saw the M800. 
but uh, that video that I'm going to link below will give you more detail on my entire Pelican collection and will keep the size of this video down a little bit. But basically I love having it in this pen roll from Superior Labor and um, it just makes it all feel very special and I love all my, I love all my Pelicans. Okay, so then this is a little three pen pen case from Gale and Leather, and I have my three Franklin Christoph pens in here. And I'm actually, uh, well, okay, well, no, I will not take them out. Um, this one is a 45 in the uh, antique glass. It has a cursive italic broad nib by Nagahara, which is a fantastic nib. I really, really love it. This is a 45 large by Franklin Christoph, and I don't know what the color is, but I have a stub nib on here. I think it's a 1.1 stub, just from Franklin Christoph. And I purchased this one used. And then I have a model 46, which has a size six nib on it. And I, this has a needlepoint Nagahara nib, which is also amazing. I love Franklin Christoph. I actually have one more coming <laughs> uh, that I ordered from someplace that might take a little bit while to come, a little bit of while, a little while to come. That's what I meant to say. And uh, I'm going to have to figure out what pen case to put them in now because I have four. They all have four instead of three. So, <laughs> all right. So this is a, another Galen pen case. This is a Galen 10 pen case. And basically I have all of my Twisby special editions in here. Actually, that's not entirely true. I have all of my Rose Gold special editions and then the Twisby VAC 700R in the iris finish in here. And I will take that one out because you can kind of see it has a really nice coloring. The nib itself is really beautiful. Um, I love this pen. It's in medium and it works really, really well. I have Troublemaker Abalone in here, which um, which is beautiful. It's a little, it's not that fancy for this pen, but it, it writes really well. And I used the inkwell that comes from Twisby to fill this and I got a like a completely full fill. Just FYI, it, it works. So then this is the uh, Golden Horse Special Edition. This, these two are Diamond 580 Special Edition Smoke Rose Gold. This is the Smoke Rose Gold Eco. This is the uh, White Rose Gold Eco. And then this is the White Rose Gold Diamond 580 Mini. I'm not going to go into too much detail about those. I love all of my Twisbees. That's all I can say is that I love my Twisbees. I want to try and go through these fairly fast so we can actually get to the larger cases which have a lot of pens in them folks okay and so this is my galen mini pen case this is my platinum glamour which um i will take this out and show you because it has a very cute little nib here um i got this vintage i love it 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 actually writes wonderfully i'm really really happy with that and uh, i'm not going to take the rest of these out so this is a Conklin Mini Graph, which is basically a little mini pen from Conklin. This, these both are by Traveler's Company. Let me lift this up so you can see them a little better. These are both by Traveler's Company. I have the original brass color and then I have the factory green. They both come in a fine nib. This is another Sailor Pro Gear Mini in the uh, green color. I can't remember the exact green color. I will take this one out and show you the nib. This is a um, Shown Pocket 6 pen. It's basically a pocket pen that has a full size number six nib on it. I have a 1.4 stub in here and um, it posts this way. I actually put a uh, copper grip section on it. I got that I got that separately because I felt like the pen itself was so incredibly light that it just felt too light to write with. And I think this is this was some sort of space themed colorway. I, I can't remember the exact one, but a lot of people have those. And then this is a Moon Man. Um, which one is this? I think it's like the M1. I can't really remember. But I have eyedropper filled it 
and I have um, not replaced the nib yet, but I might, because I think this takes a standard size five nib, so I might end up replacing that. But it's a cute little pocket pen, and it actually works quite well. I'm gonna put that in the other way. And then here we have uh, some of my Kawakos. I actually have a Kawako rose gold in a uh, watercolor set along with my two, um, oh, what's the, what's the tiny little Kawako called? Ooh, I'm forgetting. Okay, well, we're gonna move on, but I have two little tiny, oh, lily put. I have two little lily puts in a travel watercolor set as well. And then um, this is just a clear demo. This is the special edition, um, oh God, what was it called? I think it says on the side. It is the black crystal one that has the black accents. And then this is a brass uh, Kuwako. And then this is, these three are, they're all sports, but these are the plastic sports. This is the blue, the uh, sort of transparent pink, and then this is the special edition coral color, okay? All right, so then we're going to go to this little five pen case by Galen, where I have my collection of platinum pens, my platinum 3776 pens. And then I have a little notebook over here, but I haven't really used it yet. It's really just to take up space. Um, but I have a, uh, this is a music nib, I believe. Yep. So I have a platinum 3776. These are all 3776 with gold nibs, 14 karat gold nibs. They're all great. This is a music nib, which I probably use the least just because it is, um, oh, it looks like that's a green color. I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. It's hard to tell in here. It almost looks black uh, because the nib is so broad. I don't use it as much. And then I have a double broad, which has a nice bulbous tip here. And then I have a broad. Oh no, wait, that was black. That was a black in the in the um, music nib. This is the green one, which is in a broad nib, which is slightly less bulbous there. And then I have a medium nib, which was the first one I got and is pretty good for all round writing. And then I have a soft fine, which I haven't shown on the channel before. It's in this blue color and I actually quite like it. Um, I may do a video on that one because I haven't done one yet. And uh, the soft fine is really very lovely. Okay, so that is my platinum 3776 collection. And then, so now we are heading over to the big cases. So I have two, <laughs> two Galen 40 pen cases. These are actually recent purchases. This one is in the Crazy Horse Brown. This one is in the gray, the Crazy Horse Gray. Um, I had my pens in Monteverde 36 pen cases and they were starting to get a little full for one, but the other thing is uh, one of those cases some of the uh, elastic, like it has little dividers in the elastic, it broke. So, um, you know, I think it's probably because I was putting really large pens in and out of there. Um, so anyway, that's why I switched to these. The, the elastic is much stronger. I'm gonna move out just a little bit so you can see the full case. This one is less full than this one, but this one has the better pens in it. So I am going to do this one first and then we're gonna move on to the final one, which has those pens in it. I'm actually gonna move that off to the side and then I'll pick it back up. Okay, and this pen case, uh, at first I couldn't really figure it out. I'm like, why is there this little Velcro here? Um, but you need to undo the Velcro and then unzip all the way and then the little Velcro part lets you open it all the way. So I'm not going to show these close up and I'm not going to take these out generally. I'm just going to um, tell you what they are as I go through them. So the and these one of the problems with the Galen pen case is that it's not really made for thinner pens and these vintage pens are a little thinner over here so it's it's kind of hard. So this is a fountain pen revolution pen. I believe it's a Himalaya model. And this has, this is the only one I'm gonna take out guys. So this one has a um, 
ultra fine ultra flex nib on it and it, it works okay i i'm i'm actually quite okay with it this is a um faber castell andoro pen i got it way on sale and i don't really know how i feel about it if i had purchased it for full price i don't know if it would have been entirely worth it it has a medium nib on it but i'm just okay with it so then these two are pl platinum prefonte pens they're just okay they're really cheap but i'm not a huge fan of them i'm keeping them in here because i want to convert them to eyedropper pens which you can do um, and see how it goes with those which is why they're here uh, I do actually have some other cheapy pens like Monteverdi Monza and things like that that I'm not showing to you. Um, they're just okay. I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't go and find them just because. Okay, so this is a vintage Parker 51. Uh, this is an Esterbrook pocket pen um, vintage as well. I did a separate video on my vintage pens, so I'll actually put a link to those and you can see which ones these are in more detail. This is a Waterman vintage pen. Both of these are. These are, I believe, Parker 45s. Then over here, I have this uh, dropper fill pen, which is vintage. It's in a little silver design. This is a vintage Sailor pocket pen. These both are Waterman pens, uh, vintage. Oh, I've forgotten the I've forgotten the model of these, but again, they are in my vintage video. This is not a vintage pen. This is a um, Prera, a Pilot Prera, which is a little pocket pen which works great. This is a Jinhao X750. I've actually, and I will take this one out as well to show you <laughs> why it's special. So this one actually has a Knox double broad um left left footed nib I, f I forget how you call that but um i just replaced that on there these take size six nibs so they're really great for um swapping out nibs okay so make sure i put that flap back and then i'm going to go to the next section here so here i have uh, a couple of twisby ecos this one's actually an eco t which has a different shape of its body. This is the uh, Cement Gray. It's one of the most recent ones. This uh, is, I'm gonna take the ones out that have something unusual about them. So this is a Pen BBS, I forget, it's a 309, which is a piston fill. I had some issues with the piston, but once it's full, it seems to work fine. I took off the original nib and put on a medium Leonardo nib. And it actually now writes wonderfully. I'm, I'm really happy with that combo. It has a very pale ink in it, but the, with the new nib, it works great and you can read it. This uh, is another Jin Hao with another uh, replacement nib. This is a Goulet fine nib. The Goulet nibs are fantastic, but they do run really wet. So I would say that this fine works more like a medium. And then this is another Jin Hao. I cannot remember the model name, but it's basically a smaller model and it has a size five nib on it. So I have a size five Goulet 1.1 stub on here, which also writes beautifully. I smoothed this one and it works great. I, it's like one of my favorite nibs now. This Conklin Durograph, I'm not the biggest fan of Conklin. I replaced its nib and uh, this is a bold, uh, Leonardo nib that is now on there and it works pretty well. Um, I had a medium nib and a Duraflex nib. Both I did not like so I ended, ta ended up taking them off. <laughs> uh, not a big fan of Conklin. This is actually the only Conklin I have because of that. This is the Monteverde Ritma. As you can tell by the pop, it has its original stub nib on it which is blue. I had some problems with the converter on this one which um, it basically the converter just popped out. I ended up getting a different converter for it um, and now it works okay. It's still not my favorite pen. Monteverde is another brand that I'm just really not that crazy about. Okay, so now these pens, these are all Sailor, uh, what they're now calling Compass. I purchased them as Sailor 1911 Juniors from Yoseka Stationery from the imported market. Uh, they work wonderfully. They only come in medium fine, but they come in a variety of colors. I've actually uh, tuned these to write a little wetter than the normal uh, nibs out of the box. 
and now I really, really love them. I loved them before, even though they had a super fine, somewhat dry line, but by tuning them to uh, write a little wetter and also smoothing them just a little bit with some micro mesh, I love these now. So don't be afraid of that micro mesh. I was afraid and I didn't need to be. Okay, so now we have some Lamy's. Uh, these three are Lamy Safari uh, Safaris, and then this one is a Lamy All Star in a bright pink color. Those are kind of self-explanatory. I think I have all different size nibs on these. Um, these are all um, Twisby 580 Diamond Minis, which are some of my favorite pens. I actually did end up replacing. I lost the little washer on one, and I replaced it with a washer I got off of Jet Pens, and now it works quite well. It keeps the cap in place better, which is uh, a plus. This is my Mini Vac Fill by Twisby. I am taking this out because I do want to show you that there are some, not at the top, but here I've, it's developed some micro cracking here in this bottom section where you would screw on the cap. I don't know if it's because I screwed on the cap too tightly. Um, I didn't notice it when I was using the pen. I went back to it and just noticed it later sitting in my pen case. I was like, oh, what are these cracks? Um, so I really don't know what caused it. I'd heard that there was some cracking related to those pens um, in the past, but I didn't look into it enough to really know what the deal was there. This is a Diamond Twisby 580 in, uh, oh, it's the, a, it's the AL version, which in the purple. I also have a green one in the same uh, line. My husband is using that one. That one has a stub nib. This is a uh, Platinum Plazier, which I quite like in this special edition um, colorway. I, you know, it's a good pen for an inexpensive pen, but I haven't been using it as much as a lot of my other pens. Okay, so now I'm going to show you, yeah, you could hear some of those vintage pens <laughs> hitting hitting the deck there. Um, okay, so I'm gonna zip this one up, and then when you're done zipping it up, you just put the Velcro bit back. It's kind of an ingenious design, actually. Okay, we're to the last pen case, and the pen case that contains uh, the nicest collection overall, I would say. There, I mean, there's plenty of nice pens elsewhere, but this one. Uh, okay, I'll start on this side. So this is a Diplomat Arrow in the purple color, which I actually love this purple, and it has a uh, medium cursive italic nib. Purchased this from Goulet with that cursive italic nib. And then I have my Leonardo Memento Zero, which I purchased from uh, Apple Boom. And it has the rose gold finish on both the nib and the uh, excess or the clip and that sort of thing. It's a medium nib, writes beautifully. I love it. I purchased it and had them tune and smooth it before they sent it to me. And it is a great writing nib. Okay, so this is a Ranga pen, although I've now forgotten the model. They have a lot of different models. I purchased for it from Peyton Street Pens, and it does have a um, broad architect nib that I also got from Peyton Street Pens. It's hard, kind of hard to see the nib at this angle, but there you go. The next one is my Pilot Custom 74. I have a medium nib in that. I'm not really gonna take that out because there's really nothing special about, <laughs> about the um, Custom 74 other than it being a great writer and a great pen generally. This is, okay, so this one has a special nib on it as well. This is my Esterbrook Esty in lilac and uh, with the gold finish and it has a medium journaler nib it's quite beautiful. I think I recently uh, swapped out the ink in here and I have Sailor's Sailor in it, which is just an amazing ink. I, I'm kind of sorry that I came to it kind of late because now uh, <laughs> now you can't find it anywhere, but I, but I have a bottle and it'll take me a while to get through that. So this is another Esterbrook Esty in the blueberry color. I got this way on sale, which is why I got another one that's fairly similar but uh, it, all of the Estherbrooks hold size six nibs and they're interchangeable with the Franklin Christoph nibs. So this is actually a Franklin Christoph steel 
ultra fine or extra fine flex nib. And I might profile this one on the channel as well in the future, just because I have not shown that before. Um, and so this is a Joya, I think is how you pronounce the brand pen. Uh, it is an Italian pen. I haven't shown this one on the channel either, and I, I probably should. It is a fairly new brand to me. Uh, it's fairly large as a pen. It is a piston fill. It comes with a steel nib. Uh, the body on these are quite nice. Um, I'll probably do a video and profile this a little bit more. There's some things that I really like about it, and there's some things that I wish kind of were changed. So this is a Narwhal pen. This is in their, their Schuylkill color collection. I think this is Blue Marlin it might be the color. This one does not post. Some of the newer ones do. I, I'm a little puzzled by that. I replaced the nib with a uh, Goulet medium nib and a uh, huge improvement. I actually absolutely despise the original Narwhal nibs. I found them uh, to be scratchy and uh, finer than indicated. Even even after some tuning, they um, they did they just didn't work, which is where I replaced it with a Goulet nib. This is a Lamy Studio. I believe the color is Imperial Blue. I uh, swapped out the the original steel nib that came with it with this uh, broad. Is this actually a broad or a double broad? I think it's just broad uh, gold nib in this duotone color. I purchased the nib itself used. Um, and it needed a little bit of tuning when I got it, but uh, now that I have it writing pretty well, it's nice. My only problem with the Lamy's, sort of across the line, other than the Lamy 2000, is that they dry out really fast. Um, like I'll leave them on my desk for a day and I'll come back the next day and it's kind of dried out, like the ink is dried out. Again, it could be my really dry environment, but it's also kind of a pain to uh, have pens that dry out. So this is an Esterbrook Junior in the blue color. I think it's actually called Pocket Junior or something like that. I replaced the nib on it because I wasn't really a big fan. You'll notice that the only, only original nib I have on my Esterbrooks is that uh, journaler nib, which is modified. Um, this has an Opus 88 medium nib on it, which works great. I think I've said before, my only lament is that the nib is steel colored and the accents are gold on this pen. Okay, and then over here I have an Omas Extra. So this is a vintage pen. I purchased this from Peyton Street Pens used. I probably will profile this on the channel as well. Omas is no longer in existence. It has a beautiful nib, beautiful nib. Um, I actually have, it's a piston filler. Currently I have a Noodler's ink in here. I know, like why did I put a Noodler's ink in here? Basically I put Lexington Gray in it because it's one of their better behaved inks. But um, again, Lexington Gray is just not a good choice for any pen in my opinion. I plan to replace it as soon as this runs out. This is a great pen. I love the way it writes. I've been very happy with it. Uh, okay, I, I will show these just because they, although they have their original nibs on them, they are somewhat different nibs. So both of these are Sailor 1911 Profit models, which is the smaller made for the Japanese market ones. Um, this one I believe has a 21 karat nib, but it is a music nib, which actually writes quite interestingly. This would be a good candidate also for getting a nib modification, just because there is so much tipping material there. And then, oh wait, is that the Zoom? Is that the Zoom or the, yeah, I'm sorry. This is the Zoom, the other one's the music. <laughs> I thought it looked a little too bulbous to be music. So this is the Zoom nib, which, which has a little bit of a sloped nib. The next one is the music nib. They both look the same, so it's from the outside, so it's kind of hard to tell. So that is the music nib, which also is a pretty good candidate for getting, um, a custom grind. And then this is a Moonman M800 in rodden purple. It's not true rodden, there's just little plastic bits in there. And I have a custom nib. Um, this is a fine cursive italic that I purchased from Peyton Street Pens back when they were uh, selling their nibs separately from their pens. I don't think they're doing that anymore, but that's what's on that pen. It clearly has a very saturated ink on it. And then this is sort of an oddball. So this is a Bungu Box Rodden 
Twisby Eco. And uh, this supposedly has true rodden in it. I think it also has some other materials, the rodden meaning um, abalone shell. Uh, it's quite beautiful. It's just, the treatment is just on the cap here. I purchased this one used, uh, so I got it for less than the original price, but still more than the price of a Twisby Eco. Um, it came with a fine nib that was fairly scratchy, but I did manage to tune it up and now it writes quite well and I like it quite a bit and I really like the design. Okay, so this is a Custom Heritage Pilot 912 and this has a FA or flexible nib on it. And on this nib, I have changed out the feed to an ebonite feed. It's working quite well. Um, I really like this combination. I really need to practice my calligraphy more, which is kind of why I wanted to get it. This is my uh, Lamy 2000. I love my Lamy 2000. This is still one of my favorite pens in a fine nib. It's so funny, after some of the really large pens I've been messing with lately, this <laughs> the Lamy 2000 actually feels quite small by comparison, but it's still a great pen. This is my Lamy Dialogue 3, which same goes. Um, this, oh, sorry, I was going the wrong way to extend the nib. Um, this one dries out quite frequently as well. I think if it didn't have that problem, I would really love it because the gold nib that is on here, which is a gold fine, writes beautifully. I really like the fun mechanism, um, but it dries out so quickly, which is kind of annoying. Um, I wish it had more of a airtight compartment there. Okay, so this is a Keras Customs aluminum black that I purchased from Jet Pens. It still has the fine nib that came with it and it's actually quite a beautiful fine nib. I actually really like that one. The Keras Customs pens have really surprised me as being not only great pens, but having great nibs. Okay, so we only have two sections left. Okay, and this is where my um, Retro 51 uh, Lincoln was sitting. This is my Opus 88 Picnic in brown. This holds a standard uh, Yowo uh, type nib. So I put a Franklin Kristoff Bold Sig nib in here. This nib still causes me some trouble sometimes um, and doesn't have consistent flow all the time. But when it does write, it writes beautifully. And I'm, I'm wondering if I just got kind of a dud nib with that one because all the other SIG nibs that I've gotten have been amazing. I'm, I'm thinking of getting another bold nib from them in maybe the size six. I don't know. I don't know if it's the nib size or, or what. So this is another Lamy Studio. This is in the terracotta color. And I also have another uh, gold nib in here. This is in a uh, extra fine. And this nib was so scratchy and so in need of smoothing when I got it. I looked at it with a loop. It wasn't out of alignment. It just was crazy scratchy. So I've been doing a lot of work on this one. I think it still needs a little bit of work, but I've gotten it to the point where it writes more to my liking at the very least. So there's that one. And then here is my Pilot Vanishing Point in uh, orange or yellow. I don't know, mustard? I don't know what color that is. This is another one in medium. What I find kind of interesting in with this one is it has the gold tone nib, but I find that the gold tone nib is much stiffer than the black nib that I have on my uh, blue version of this pen. This is another Narwhal pen. This is a, a Narwhal Asfur Bronze, I believe is the name of it. This one does post, unlike the blue one. And again, I've replaced the nib with a 1.1 stub from Goulet. And this one actually writes beautifully now. I, I am so happy with this pen and nib combination. The Goulet nibs are quite great. I think Yowo makes them. And then this is a Tachia, uh, I think it's the Spotlight version in the forest eye color with a music steel nib which is quite nice. I like that one. It's one of my favorite pens actually to write with. This is a Pen Lux uh, in the, I think it's called the Rainforest color. It has rose gold on the outside, but the nib doesn't match, which was always kind of odd to me. It has a gold nib, uh, but this nib 
which is a medium nib, writes beautifully. I don't know how they tuned their nibs. I really like it. It's sort of an, um, a plus-sized pen. It's also a piston filler, which I love. I love piston filler pens, so that one's great. And then I have this Retro 51 Chiopino, which has this abalone shell on the outside. This one, I have also replaced the nib. I put a Franklin Christoph fine SIG nib on here. The uh, uh, Custom 51, or the Retro 51 rather, uh, pens do take Yo-Wo nib units, which is also the same as the Franklin Christoph nib units. This is my Ranga Monterey that I purchased from Peyton Street Pens. I have replaced the nib that I had on there before with a medium SIG nib from Franklin Kristoff. This is a fantastic writer. This medium works amazingly. I love it. And then we have my another Lamy Safari, but this is kind of a special one. This is the petrol color, which I uh, really, really love, this sort of dark teal. Um, and it just has a medium nib. That's all. Uh, I just really like it. <laughs> all right, so we're finally on to the end. We're almost at an hour. I told you it would be long, and I actually tried to hurry it along a bit. But these are going to be the last ones. So this is an Opus 88 Omar in the demonstrator version. This has a uh, Peyton Street Pens fine architect grind. Again, when they were selling their nibs separately, I got the, or actually I think I took this off of the Monterey. That's, that's how that got on there. And uh, it works great after I did a little smoothing on it. I'm really happy. And this is the Opus 88 demonstrator, which has the flatter top and bottom. This one has an extra fine SIG nib from Franklin Christoph. So I have all of the different SIG nib sizes and I love them all. Okay, this next one is another Opus 88 demonstrator in the gray color. I do plan to change this nib out, but for now it still has the extra fine Opus 88 nib that came with it. The Opus 88 nibs are actually quite lovely. Um, I might end up changing it out for a, another Opus 88 nib in a different size because I've kept them. Um, but it's an all around great pen. Those, these are all eyedropper pens, which I didn't think I would like, but this has a little stopper mechanism that prevents ink from uh, spurting out accidentally. And it actually, I, I love them. I, I, they're, they're kind of my new favorite uh, pens, the Opus 88s. All the models, I like them all. Okay, so this is a Diplomat Arrow. It's just, it just has a normal medium nib. It writes fantastically. I really, really love this particular pen and nib. And then I have all of my uh, Bennu pens. So this one is a Bennu Minima in the uh, Berry Field color, I believe. This is a Bennu Briolette in Cobalt color. Both of these are Bennu Euphoria pens. This one is uh, in the Vodka on the Rocks. And then this is the, uh, is it Bora Bora? I think it's Bora Bora. This is a pen from Birmingham Pens, uh, one of their custom pens. I got a 0.6 italic nib, or not italic, but uh, 0.6 stub. And I, it's a very unusual size for a nib, and I actually quite like it. Uh, I believe this is the Barbados color of just sort of their base model, which is the least expensive model they have. And then finally, we have the uh, Visconti Breeze, which I had sort of mixed reviews about before on the channel, but I have since replaced it with a just a medium Schmidt nib that just right out of the box wrote beautifully. And uh, they do take standard Schmidt housing um, for the nibs. I was just able to unscrew the old one and screw this one in and it worked quite, quite well. Okay, and that is my collection. I managed to make it in under an hour. Like I said, there are some still some pens missing, but that is the bulk of my collection. I hope they were all in frame. I realized towards the end I was trying to go a little bit fast and I hope they all managed to get in there. Um, I probably will do a follow-up video on these Galen cases, these 40 pen 
Galen cases. I actually quite like them. They're uh, very practical. Like I said, my, my only issue with them is that it's for thinner pens, it's harder because they tend to fall out because the elastics seem to be made for larger pens. But there you go. I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and uh, please subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. I hope to see you next time. And in the meantime, have a great day. And like I said earlier, if you have any questions, ask below, or if you want to see more of any of these pens, just let me know and I'll do what I can. All right. Thanks so much. Bye.